Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am Christine Dixon of the Ordinary Sacred, and this is part two of releasing cultural burdens. So if you haven't seen part one, you can go back and watch that. I give an overview about myself as if I'm leading the workshop and a quick overview of IFS. And then we talk about what are cultural burdens and why are they so elusive to us? They are just the water we swim in, the air we breathe. And so you can go back and check that out if you want to. Um, today, I'm actually going to lead an exercise that I also have several other videos about. It's called the white room exercise, and it helps kind of some of your subconscious come into consciousness around this because it can be so hidden from us. Uh, some of these cultural burdens, legacy burdens, family burdens. So in the past, I did several videos already on some of the topics, but today I actually really want to focus on the topic of scarcity because originally when I made this workshop, it was uh, many of my parts had this desire to meet this wish that beloved IFS teacher Derek Scott had put out into the universe that someone would do a collective unburdening around scarcity, the cultural legacy burden of scarcity. And so I want to lead this exercise specifically focusing in on scarcity. And, you know, you, you may have different levels of burdening around this. You may be aware of it or not, but hopefully this exercise really helps, um, just enlighten your system about what you might be carrying. So I'm going to share the slide. Uh, but actually, this is going to be the wrong slide. We're going to go back here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make my picture bigger, even though I won't be on this slide too long. So there are so many areas, right, that we can have cultural burdens in and many more than what you see on the right here. But I already did some videos, I think on family, education, and religion. I might've done medicine. I can't remember. You can go back and check those out though. Um, but you can have burdens around science, government, money, gender, sexuality, race, all of these. And so in those past videos, I taught about the white room experiment. We're going to do it again today, and I'm going to do it right along with you. You can also pause at any time if you want to um, just take some more time with it. But I invite you to focus on the topic of scarcity. So I'm going to stop sharing that so you can see me. Um, so what I've done, I like to support myself by kind of writing down what happens during this experience um, so I can remember it later and refer back to it. But if, if that is distracting for you and you just want to kind of be in a meditative space and write down things afterward, you can do that as well. But you'll, you might see me kind of half eyes open <laughs> writing some things down. So at the top of my, my page in my journal, I have written the word scarcity. So this is our, our focus during the exercise. So I invite you to find a comfort, a comfortable position, ah, perhaps with your back supported, you might be sitting in a chair or on the ground, or you might be lying down, whatever helps you feel relaxed and supported. Sometimes what I like to do first uh, especially when I'm about to go inside, is to look around my environment to make sure that my system feels safe. So I'm just noting what I see, how I feel, what I hear, and checking with my inner system. Are you safe enough in the external environment to go inside? And of course, I feel very tranquil here. If you do not feel safe, I invite you to really support your own privacy and safety. And then if you do feel safe, you might close your eyes or have a soft gaze and just take a moment to notice your body in this space. Notice your breath. 
And if it feels supportive, you can extend your exhale. That's a signal to your body that you're safe. Of course, if you're not safe, you don't need to do that. And I like to feel my feet supported by the ground, perhaps gravity just pulling down on my body, on my shoulders and my jaw. Just relaxing into this space. And as you begin to go inside, I invite you to imagine that you are sitting in the middle of a white room. So you might imagine just a brightly painted white floor, white four walls, white ceiling. And this is a safe space. You can relax here. We're just, this kind of helps us just clear our mind so that there's a tabula rasa, right? there's kind of a blank, a blank slate from which uh, our subconscious can come forward. You might imagine the word scarcity printed or written on the wall in front of you, and that that is the intention of what we're going to focus on right now. Again, relax, and if you have thinking parts or parts that want to get this right, you can ask them to just, just let them know you can't get it wrong. Even if nothing comes, it's okay. Um, often in that open space of allowing nothing, something may come, but there's no right or wrong. And just be a passive, receptive witness with the topic of scarcity and allow the parts in your subconscious to show you anything they want you to know. You can invite them. What do you want me to know about scarcity? Whether it's money or resources, love, affection, whatever it is. And you might see images you might hear sounds, you might have memories, you might have feelings in your body, um, and things might scroll by in front of you on the white walls. You might see objects, symbols, just be open. And you can pause and if you'd like and just receive for a while. I'm going to do that in real time now. So just so you know what's happening for me, um, I'm being shown certain images, certain words, um, kind of memories, just little things here and there. And I'm just writing notes about what's being shown to me. Some things are, are good, some things are bad. It's really interesting. I'll, I'll let you know exactly what's being shown to me in, a, in just a second. I'm just asking, is there anything else you want me to see?
showing me different times in my life. Anything else? Okay. All right. I'm going to stop for now. It's shown me um, four or five things. And, um, and of course, my whatever my parts are showing me will be different than what yours are showing you. And so when I share my experience, it's just um, a, an example. It's not prescriptive. And it's hopefully an inspiration for you to to really listen to your own parts because they're going to tell you very unique things, experiences, feelings, fears, uh, sensations, different things. So this is fascinating. Um, the first image I got was my about three or four year old self crying and in the preschool or the daycare and screaming and saying, I want my mommy, I want my mommy and her not coming. And it really felt like and then I actually saw written on the white wall, love and attention. And there was like a scarcity of love and attention or of um, kind of being seen. Uh, I'm getting another image that my parts are giving me right now. I remember in kindergarten when I would was on the uh, this <laughs> horse that was like a swing that went back and forth. And I, I felt very invisible. Uh, I didn't recognize that anyone saw or heard me. And I remember I would sing songs really loud. And one day one of the, the teachers came and recognized the song I was singing and made a comment. And it was this epiphany of, oh, you see me? You mean I'm real? <laughs> you know, so it's kind of a, a scarcity of attention uh, that my parts were showing me. And then um, growing up, it started kind of showing me throughout my house, the fact that we had very little, we didn't materially, we didn't have a computer, we didn't have a microwave, a VCR, all the things that a lot of my friends had. We had a very small house. Um, but my parts were saying that, that they didn't really suffer so much from that. They didn't feel like they had scarcity of things so much, um, but they were just showing me the reality that there were some things that I didn't have. Um, then when I asked anything else, they showed me uh, when I was a young wife and mother living in East LA, there was a very real sense of scarcity and of fear around not having enough because my first husband would, the, the word they used was, would siphon the money. <laughs> Like whatever money uh, he would just spend it and we would have, we would have nothing for our sustenance. So there was a real fear around a lack of needs being met for myself and my children um, and a lack of control around being able to save the money because someone else was taking it. So this one, and it's really fascinating also to notice the, the different um, type of energy. So for example, the first scene of a crying mommy, mommy, there was a, a real sense of loneliness of um, not so much fear, but, but like I, I'm alone, I'm unseen, um, a bit of shame, but it feels a certain way in my body. Um, and then when it was showing me the lack of things in the house, there was no, no sense in my body of real lack. It's like, it was just showing me, but I felt okay in my body. And then when I, when it went to this scene in East LA and this real helpless feeling that I could feel my heart rate increasing, um, a, a constriction in my throat, a little bit of tightness in my belly. Like there was a lot of hypervigilance and fear, uh, parts that developed around that. So, so I'm paying attention to what it's showing me and, and the sensations in my body. Um, and then the last thing that it showed me was more recently when I felt very sick and I've had this collapse response, there's this real fear that, um, 
I'm not going to be taken care of. Uh, I'm not going to have the care that I need. There's a specific kind of trauma moment that it showed me when I was in the hospital um, the second time uh, several years ago. And it was the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep. I was in immense pain and the lights were on outside my room in the middle of the night and the nurses were laughing and my parts had this epiphany. No one's going to save you. No one really cares about you. You're going to die here essentially. So it's this fear of death, <laughs> um, fear that no one's coming to save you. No one cares, um, particularly around physical collapse and, and illness. So fascinating. Um, that was very enlightening. I, I found it actually a little bit difficult to do kind of while I was on camera. Um, in the past, I've done it off camera, but my parts still really showed me incredibly valuable trailheads, right? Each one of these, the crying and mommy and daddy are not coming. Um, the, the lack of things that my friends had, that, that one doesn't feel as burdened in my body, but it, it really wants me to understand that. And then um, it, just a side note about that as well. It seemed almost like my parts were saying that that was a legacy gift, that I didn't have all the things. That's the sense that I got. Um, and I thought that was that was interesting. And then and then not having the control and the money being siphoned away, not being able to provide for myself and my kids, that felt really burdened. And then the the uh, sickness, no one coming. Um, I've done some work with that, but it's there's still some more I think to explore there. So, um, I hope that this experience was interesting for you. As we go further with the videos with this workshop, later we're going to talk about these, what to do with these trailheads, right? And how to we can go back in time to those moments when our parts have gained the scarcity, whether it was, you know, several of these for me were personal burdens, right? So they might show you that. Uh, very real experiences in which the parts developed a hypervigilance, a fear, um, a burden around it. But it can also be cultural. So, some of the, the cultural aspect actually for me was actually the one about, you know, we didn't have all the things, the microwave, the, the computer, the VCR, um, that our family was not complying with the cultural norms and expectations. And in many ways, that was quite a gift to me. Um, so uh, it's a little bit <laughs> countercultural in a sense, but perhaps you, your parts have shown you different ways that the culture has perpetuated this, or maybe it's a legacy burden. And there's this sense that ancestors in the past have experienced immense um, scarcity. And you can be open to whatever is shown to you. And later in the in this workshop, we will talk more about what to do and how to go witness, reparent or redo those situations, um, to retrieve them, bring them into the present. Um, and, and we'll talk about bringing in our ancestors and their selves and, and them supporting us and unburdening the situations that they may have been in or the cultural burdens that they have taken on and passed on. And we can bring them in to help us uh, with the unburdening. So um, I hope this was a valuable, enlightening experience for you. I would love for you to share, if you're willing, uh, some of the things that came up for you. Um, any ahas, any enlightenments that you gained, you can share that in the comments. Or if you have any questions about this experience, you can share those in the comments as well. See you next time.